In Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, the phoenix is described as an enormous or gargantuan bird with orange, red, or violet feathers and blue claws. Their eyes were akin to fiery glowing rubies, and their bodies were described as living flames given the shape of a bird. They were native to the elemental plane of fire for the most part, but some were also from the lawful good plane of Elysium. Their planes of origin seemed to affect their demeanor, as they were described as champions of righteousness by some, and agents of chaotic random destruction by others. The phoenix has an AC of 18 and 170 hit points, with a walking speed of 20 and a flying speed of 120. They have a plus 4 to strength, a plus 8 to dex, a plus 7 to constitution, a negative 4 in intellect, a plus 5 to wisdom, and a plus 4 to charisma, with a plus 10 wisdom save and plus 9 charisma save as well. They're resistant to non-magical weapon attacks and are completely immune to poison and fire damage. They're immune to being exhausted, grappled, paralyzed, petrified, poisoned, knocked prone, restrained, or stunned. And they have dark vision up to 60 feet with a passive perception of 15. They have the unique trait Fiery Death and Rebirth, in which their death procs a 60-foot wide explosion. Players within 60 feet of the Phoenix must make a DC 20 dex save, taking 4d10 fire damage on a failure, a potential of 4 to 40, or half as much on a success. After this explosion, the body of the Phoenix deteriorates, leaving behind an egg-shaped cylinder weighing 5 pounds that deals 66 fire damage if touched, a potential of 6 to 36. This cinder egg is immune to all damage, and after 1 to 6 days, it hatches into a brand new Phoenix. The Phoenix also also has the trait Fire Form, in which it can move through a narrow space at least one inch wide, as well as dealing 1d10 fire damage to any creature that strikes it with a melee attack from 5 feet away. The Phoenix can also move into another creature's space and share it, dealing 1d10 fire damage the first time that it enters the space, a potential of 1 to 10. The Phoenix also has the traits Flyby, which prevents opportunity attacks while flying, and Illumination, which causes it to shed bright light in a 60 foot radius and dim light 30 feet beyond. It also has 3 legendary resistances and the trait C monster, in which it deals double damage to structures and objects. In combat, it has a multi-attack consisting of a beak and talon strike. The beak and talons both have a plus 13 to hit, with the beak reaching 15 feet and dealing 2d6 plus 8, a potential of 10 to 20 fire damage, and ignites the creature. The target must take an action to snuff themselves out, taking 1d10 fire damage at the start of every turn that they're still on fire. The talons also can reach 15 feet and deal 2d8 plus 8 fire damage, a potential of 10 to 24. Finally, the phoenix has three legendary actions it can take at the end of a player's turn. For one action, it can make a beak attack if in range, or move its movement speed. For two actions, it can swoop down, moving 120 feet to a target and attacking with its talons. As a DM, I would use the Phoenix as the ultimate dive bomber. With its fiery body and near limitless ways to deal passive fire damage plus the flyby trait, it makes sense to use its 120 movement speed and attacks to deal burst damage on its turn, and then deal fire damage over time, whittling away at your players. I would begin combat by having the Phoenix choose a player at random as it's not a very intelligent creature, but in subsequent turns, I would always have it target the player that's dealing it the most damage overall, which is likely going to be your ranged players and casters. On the Phoenix's turn, I would have it dive down towards its target, stopping 15 feet from them to do its multi-attack. Next, I would have it fly into that target's space, setting them ablaze for 1d10 fire damage, and then use whatever remains of its movement to fly away. Because of their flyby trait, we don't need to worry about opportunity attacks. As the Phoenix moves through the battlefield, I would also have it set set fire to its surroundings, which does not require an action. Using this feature, I would try to box players in by setting buildings, trees, or whatever else is flammable on fire, blocking their escape paths. On the player's turns, I would use the swoop action to fly at a target and attack with talons, preferably a ranged player to impose disadvantage on their attacks or to force them to move away, procking an opportunity attack from the bird. At the end of the next player's turn, I would use the remaining one legendary action to move 120 feet away from any players that might be closing in on the phoenix. By employing this hit-and-run strategy mixed with no opportunity attacks and the ability to succeed on failed saving throws three times, the Phoenix can deal massive amounts of damage without ever getting hit, forcing players to burn through, pun intended, their most powerful spells, items, and other resources to take it down, only to suddenly have to survive a massive fiery explosion that results in the Phoenix's inevitable resurrection. In Greek mythology, the Phoenix was an immortal bird of fire associated with the sun. While this is the most commonly known origin of the Phoenix, many scholars have called into question where it actually originated, as there are analogs for it in almost all ancient cultures. Many modern scholars believe that the associated bird of fire might have been spread through the ancient world by storytellers such as Pliny the Elder, Lucan, Isidore of Seville, and Herodotus, the last of whom claimed it originated in ancient Egypt. Though this claim is shaky at best, and most agree that early Egyptian texts did not depict a phoenix, instead revering a Bennu, a solar bird similar in aspects to the Grecian phoenix, but clearly not the same. And many of these depictions 
names have been dated after the ancient Greek legend proliferated throughout the ancient world. Regardless of origin, the phoenix has been used universally as a motif for renewal, the cycle of time, and death leading to new life. In comparing the monster to the myth, we find that much of it is the same. Both creatures are associated with fire, the sun, and in some cases divine energy. And both are creatures of living flame that explode when they die and are reborn anew. Where they differ is in their size and demeanor, as the phoenix of legend is often described as a smaller, kindly creature, and the D&D monster is massive with the capability to do great harm to adventurers and structures alike. If you enjoyed that video, please leave a like and comment below, and consider subscribing to the channel. You can also join the Patreon for $1 a month, link in the description below, to access videos days before they're posted here, as well as other exclusive stuff like short stories, videos, and more. For all of my other content, you can find me on Twitch at Moglaroo, YouTube and TikTok at Moglaroo Streams, or my website, mwjgilmore.com.